just put the ball on it. The example that you showed, for me anyway, was kind of a quick release to that mansion. In fact, I wanted to if it was too quick a release when you said well, that term. That because a lot of decisions were made in the formulation of the text that you put forward there that I think would have been important things for the learner and for herself to do. Uh, agree, agree. Uh, I hope, and, and I prefer that we draw down into this level. I mean, what we're saying is that there are assumptions made by educators about what we're just, well, this is just a step of gathering relevancy. This isn't where the real stretch is. Well, when you're wrong about whether that step is working to gather relevancy, and that's where the stretch is for the learner, then what you just said falls down. But if you're talking about where we really want the stretch to occur, then you're right. You don't want the tools of short-circuiting this stretch. Okay, but in order for us to get to a point where we can even have that discussion realistically, as opposed to kind of blindly and mindlessly, the resolution of our sensitivity to learners has to go to another step. So I entirely agree with what you're saying, and I appreciate being called there. I think it's almost like as we follow a flow of discussion, even here, even if certain words are used in this context, if we're following enough of the flow of them, when we get to those stretch points, we can tolerate a fair amount of ambiguity because there's a sense of a, a safety or support underneath that that we know will carry us through. So we'll attend through that span until we come to, oh, okay, that's what we're going to turn that for. And, and there's a stretch made. And so, in a way, this learner scope or learning is being served to learn in two, I think, fundamentally ways. One is as that safety net that they know that there's a support network underneath them continuously so that if there is something that, that, you know, it's like reading a paragraph where sometimes you understand each of the words, but the meaning as a whole is lost on you. You don't realize, well, what, what are they getting at? And so you have a net that will help you if you bump off at any particular element in, in that, that can give you a quick response to it but also give you a different different lens to shape the way that you follow through with your own um, your own sense of background, all the resources that you bring to that moment, to stretch and talk some new sense of completion. And that's where learning takes place, is in that micro time stretch. And that's where the learner interface tends to try to address. And so in a sense, I think it does support us in tolerating them with you because we have the support to make those Go back to this metaphor of this being kind of a gymnasium with the flex of muscle bone. If the, if the tension releases before you really flex the muscle, then, yeah. then the tool breaks down. So right. I would look for something in that text that would create that part, tension. Right. That's part of the design of the, the instructional design, right? As to whether or not the flow articulated in one of the representations, okay, which is the, the, the where the stretch is occurring. The reference level here should be, I mean, there's one level where you say, well, we're going to introduce a new word and we want it to just hang in attention and we're going to pick up its meaning two paragraphs down. That's pretty rare, actually. That you could argue that happens. Could you have a lot of points of the example of gravity, but it seems to the child, you're describing it in terms of the form of information. The type of information the child is more interested in than that. Right. Something positive. Right, right. No, no, no. I, let's, let's jump to that real quick. You had a second question. Objection. That's all right. I'm off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 I'm, no, no, I'm off. I'm interested in that. Okay, yeah. This system isn't necessarily meant to mediate just pages of text flying through, but whatever the experience you may have, including things that are more active, hands on simulators, if you will. So, for example, I'll come back to. Um, back to the learner thing. And say, for example, representational element goes more empirically, uh, and I want to launch an external to read in a simulator. And uh, you play around with some kind of more self sense, intuitive sense, and I'll play with the situation. I'll play kind of a solar system or a lost moon or uh, this system is a cockpit for driving through experiences. It doesn't care what it is. It could be ultimately video, it could be 
simulation that can be whatever the power of the platform can permit and whatever resources it's been connected to. This is a mediator of the general relationship between such resources and learning. It's not about, it's not resource type limited. The other part in response to how I think those two questions are so is that um, in effect, it can also be used, and, and we see envision it used as a workbook and, and as a co-creative structure for students to participate together so that if they're given the seed principle of something like what would be a traditional test now, um, with enough resources to carry them through that material, then they could be participating together or individually designing all kinds of components. Okay, well, what are the key points here? Or how do I I, I establish what are the laws that are governing the way that gravity is understood. And they can create the hypercard text or, or um, reports into it and be feeding it into the system and growing the system for future learners as well. Yeah, let's, let's, let's get into the collaborative components and the learner generated or expanding resource bubbles that resource the learning of other learners behind me. Okay, we will talk about that. I want to switch gears real quickly, and, and really thank you for bringing this out. I mean, normally, it never requires a certain resolution of attention to what we're talking about to even get at. Because I mean, what you're saying is, well, we're, that presupposes that we know where we're really trying to make a stretch, and where we're just assuming somebody's already with us, that we lead them up to a stretch. And that itself, I said, that we don't know. And that we're not going to know until we've got a different lens peer into the learning process in individuals while we expose them to or let them participate in learning from things that we develop the resource for learning. And that's part of the spirit of it. Uh, and perhaps one more thing on attention engagement that might be helpful before I move on to the next stage of the technology presentation is a story that I know the parents are in the story about my son. It's very, very dear to my heart that um, to also be part of this article, and that casts the light on me on this whole issue of engagement. So how is the attention to how do people become tied in the learning process? Um, I've been very fascinated by the popular explosion of the new Dendo machine in the United States. There's been some 30 million of them for Wow. This is long. Um, parents don't play them. They're intimidated parents. Very few adults play these things. Little kids are playing. If you go around the house, they've got them. Not one kid. And then there's always been a cluster of kids, and they're kind of in the back. It's like, it's, it's an entirely different kind of thing. You know, it really suggests that everybody watch it once or twice. I was fascinated by what was it that was pulling the kids in, mesmerizing them, causing them to be so juiced, engaged in this game process. It's radically different than anything I ever experienced before. So, <clears throat> my son happened to have one, my older son, and my son. I know sometimes I just love watching my old son do it. And as I'll show you later, I've built many different experimental interfaces for kids to learn with, so we could learn about kids with. But this particular session I'm describing, my son, little one, Darren, again, four or five at the time, and he had five or six different buddies from around the neighborhood. And they were playing Zelda, I think, but it could have been Mario Brothers, an adventure and action mix Nintendo. I don't know if any of these things mean anything to you. It's not important what I'm about to say. But I hooked up a VCR between the output of the game machine and the input of the television set. So I could record what was going on on the screen. And then I buzzed the room. And I got the kids to try to describe. The kids that were watching the one playing, and the one playing, they said, well, tell me what's going on, because I don't understand this. And so they did. 